This video is about rates of change in linear and quadratic functions. This is AP Pre-Calculus Topic 1.3. If you appreciate this content, please give it a like. For number 1 through 6, selected values for several functions are given in the tables below. For each table of values, determine if the function could be linear, quadratic, or neither. Memorize this chart so you can write it on a piece of scratch paper at the beginning of your next test or quiz. A function will be linear if the rate of change is constant, and a function will be quadratic if the rate of change of the rate of change is constant. In other words, a function will be quadratic if the rate of change increases or decreases at a constant rate. For number one, these are the changes in the output values, and these are the changes in the input values. Because we have consecutive equal length input value intervals, we don't actually have to calculate the average rate of change to see that the average rate of change is not constant. So f of x could not be linear. Again, because we have consecutive equal length input value intervals, we don't have to actually show the average rate of change to determine that the average rate of change is not changing at a constant rate. We were not asked to justify our answer, so we could just say neither. But let's practice justifying our answer because usually you will have to. f of x is not linear because the average rate of change is not constant. f of x is not quadratic either because the average rate of change does not change at a constant rate over consecutive equal length input value intervals. For this statement about quadratic, we have to say over consecutive equal length input value intervals. It's not necessary for the linear statement. For number two, these are the changes in the output values, and these are the changes in the input values. Because we have consecutive equal length input value intervals, we don't have to show the average rate of change to see that the average rate of change is not constant. Therefore, g of x is not linear. We can also tell that the average rate of change is increasing at a constant rate. So g of x is quadratic. g of x could be quadratic because the average rate of change is increasing at a constant rate over consecutive equal length input value intervals. Remember, if you say that g of x could be quadratic, you must mention consecutive equal length input value intervals. For number three, these are the changes in the output values and these are the changes in the input values. Because we have consecutive equal length input value intervals, we don't have to show the average rate of change to see that the average rate of change is not constant. So h of x is not linear. We can also see that the rate of change is increasing at a constant rate. So h of x is quadratic. We say h of x could be quadratic because the average rate of change is increasing at a constant rate over consecutive equal length input value intervals. For number four, here are the changes in the output values and here are the changes in the input values. We do not have consecutive equal length input value intervals this time, so we need to actually show the rate of change. The average rate of change on each interval is the change in output divided by the change in input. So that's 1, 1, 1, and 1. Because the average rate of change is constant, we know that k of x is linear or rather k of x could be linear because the average rate of change is constant. For number five, here are the changes in the output values and here are the changes in the input values. Because we have consecutive equal length input value intervals, we don't have to actually show the rate of change to see that the rate of change is constant. So m of x could be linear m of x could be linear because the average rate of change is constant. Notice that for linear, we don't have to mention consecutive equal length input value intervals. For number six, these are the changes in the output values, and these are the changes in the input values. 
because we do have consecutive equal length input value intervals, we don't have to actually calculate the average rate of change to see that the average rate of change is not constant. So k of r could not be linear. k of r could not be quadratic either because we see that the rate of change is not changing at a constant rate. k of r is not linear because the average rate of change is not constant. k of r is not quadratic either because the average rate of change does not change at a constant rate over consecutive equal length input value intervals. For 7 through 9, the tables below give values of several quadratic functions at selected values of x. For each function, find the value of the constant k in the table. For number 7, these are the changes in the output values, and these are the changes in the input values. Since p of x is a quadratic function, we know that the average rate of change should be changing at a constant rate. For the first two intervals, we see that the output value changes are decreasing by 2 each time. The same should hold for the third interval. If the last output value change was 1, the next output value change should be negative 1. A change of negative 1 takes us from 9 to 8. So k is equal to 8. For number 8, here are the output value changes we have so far, and here are the input value changes. Because m of x is a quadratic function, the average rate of change should change at a constant rate. From negative 5 to negative 3, the output values increase by 2. This pattern should continue. So an increase of 2 will take us from negative 3 to negative 1. And an output value change of negative 1 will take us from negative 4 to negative 5. So k is equal to negative 5. Let's check our answer by continuing the process. The next output value change should be 2 more than the last. So that's 1. An output value change of 1 takes us from negative 5 to negative 4. So this is right. For number 9, here are the changes in the output values that we can see, and here are the changes in the input values. Since f of x is a quadratic function, the average rate of change should change at a constant rate. We see that the output value changes are decreasing by 2. This pattern should continue up the chart. A decrease of 2 means the previous change must be 6. And a change of 6 takes us from 6 to 12. So k must equal 6. But let's continue the process to check our answer. A decrease of 2 means the previous change must have been 8. And a change of 8 will take us from negative 2 to 6. So we know this is the correct answer. For 10 through 12, the tables below give values of several linear functions at selected values of x. For each function, find the value of the constant k in the table. This will be easy because a linear function has a constant rate of change. Here are the input value changes, and here's the one output value change that we know. Because g of x is linear, the rate of change is constant. So the next change in the output values will also be 4. A change of 4 takes us from negative 1 to positive 3. So k is equal to 3. Let's continue the process to check our answer. The next change in the output values will also be 4, which will take us from 3 to 7. So we know this is right. For number 11, here are the input value changes, and here's the one output value change that we know. Since h of x is linear, the rate of change should be constant, so the next change in the output values will also be negative 2. A change of negative 2 takes us from 5 
to 3. So k is equal to 3. But let's check our answer by continuing the process. Another change of negative 2 will take us from 3 to 1. So this is right. For number 12, here are the input value changes, and here's the one output value change that we know. Be careful. This time we do not have consecutive equal length input value intervals. So we have to actually show the calculation of the rate of change. The average rate of change is the change in output value divided by the change in input value. So for this last interval, the average rate of change is 3. Since j of x is linear, the rate of change is constant. So we should have a rate of change of 3 for every interval. In order to end up with an average rate of change of 3 for the first interval, the output value change must be 6, because then the output value change divided by the input value change will give us 3. An output value change of 6 will take us from 1 to 7. That means k must equal 7. Let's continue the process to check our answer. To end up with an average rate of change of 3 for the next interval, the change in the output value must be 9. 9 divided by 3 gives 3. A change of 9 does take us from 7 to 16, so we know this is right. For 13 through 18, selected values for several functions are shown below. The graph of each function is known to be either concave up or concave down. For each problem, use the data in the tables to determine if the given function is concave up or concave down. I have asked you guys to memorize this chart so you can write it in the margin or on a piece of scratch paper at the beginning of your next test or quiz. If you have not memorized this yet, pause the video and study it right now. The part that we need is the upper left hand corner. If f of x is concave up, that means the rate of change is increasing. When f of x is concave down, the rate of change is decreasing. For number 12, here are the output value changes and here are the input value changes. Because we have consecutive equal length input value intervals, we don't have to find the average rate of change to see that the average rate of change is increasing. Therefore, f of x is concave up. f of x is concave up because the average rate of change is increasing over consecutive equal length input value intervals. For number 14, these are the changes in the output values, and these are the changes in the input values. Because we have consecutive equal length input value intervals, we don't need to calculate the rate of change to see that the rate of change is decreasing. Therefore, g of t is concave down. g of t is concave down because the average rate of change is decreasing over consecutive equal length input value intervals. By the way, this word consecutive means that the intervals are all connected. Negative 4 to 0, 0 to 4, 4 to 8, 8 to 12. There are no gaps in these intervals. That's what consecutive means. For number 15, these are the output value changes and these are the input value changes. Since we have consecutive equal length input value intervals, we don't have to calculate the rate of change to see that the rate of change is decreasing. Therefore, h of x is concave down h of x is concave down because the average rate of change is decreasing over consecutive equal length input value intervals. For number 16, these are the changes in the input values and these are the changes in the output values. As we change from negative 6 to negative 4 to negative 1 to 0, the output value changes are increasing. We are moving to the right on the number line. And since we have consecutive equal length input value intervals, that means that the average rate of change is also increasing. Therefore, k of x is concave up. 
K of x is concave up because the average rate of change is increasing over consecutive equal length input value intervals. For number 17, these are the changes in the input values, and these are the changes in the output values. We can see that from negative 8 to negative 5 to negative 2 to 1, the output value changes are increasing. We are moving to the right on the number line. And since we have consecutive equal length input value intervals, that means the average rate of change is also increasing. Therefore, P of x is concave up. P of x is concave up because the average rate of change is increasing over consecutive equal length input value intervals. For number 18, these are the input value changes and these are the output value changes. We can see that the output value changes are decreasing. They are getting more negative. And since we have consecutive equal length input value intervals, that means that the average rate of change is also decreasing. Therefore, J at T is concave down. J at T is concave down because the average rate of change is decreasing over consecutive equal length input value intervals. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.